Imagine you waking up in the morning, grabbing your phone, and heading to the rooftop or an helicopter away to take you to a testing facility. But suddenly, your test is interrupted by a monster. The next morning, you wake up as if nothing happened. But soon, you will realize that something is amiss. You have been living in a simulation all this time. This is Prey, a game that is often overlooked to the point where many people don't even know it exists. Inspired by a game like System Shock and Bioshock, Prey managed to combine these elements to elevate the immersive gaming experience in a way that few other games can match. In the game, you play as Morgan, a man who must navigate inside Talos 1, a space station built during the 1970s to contain a monster called the Mimics. Mimics, also known as Typhoons, are scary. The frightening things about Typhoon is that unlike monsters in other games, Typhoons is unique because they can change their shape and hide from the player. This Typhoon variation is called the Mimics that you already encountered in my playthrough before. But furthermore, there are many different variations of Typhoons. Like for example this one, it's called the Phantom. The Phantom can kill the player with its light beam, and it also has the ability of teleportation, so the player cannot easily escape. Or you can, you may also encounter this one, it's called the Crystoid. The Crystoid can act as a mobile mines that detonate if the player near the host. In fact, there are many many variations of this monster in Prey. This is one thing I love about Prey. Unlike other games where variations of monsters are not unique, Prey's variations of monsters are unique on their own. During my playthrough, it forced me to deal with them carefully and think smart when approaching all these different Typhoon variations. Despite the many variations of monsters, Prey provides player with several unique tools to fight the Typhoons inside Talos 1. One such tool is the glue gun, which is my favorite. The glue gun can freeze mimics, allowing them to be hit with a wrench for easy killing. The cool things about this gun, aside from being a weapon, is that it also can be used as a tool to open a non-accessible levels for the player. For example, at the start of the game, when I was at the narrowmost division, I used the glue gun to climb to the second level, which allowed me to find and use the weapon called Disruptor early in the game for the rest of my playthrough. Another tool I think is cool is called the Beam Emitter, which vaporizes enemies with its Grand Laser Beam. This weapon is handy when you counter a sudden nightmare enemy encounter during your playthrough. Prey also provides a list of side weapons that I've never encountered in any other game. One such weapon is the Recycle Charge, which allows you to change all objects, including corpses and enemies, into a chunk of resources. The cool things about Prey is that all objects, including weapons, can be recycled to suit your need. To create a weapon, you must first recycle it using a recycle charge, or you can also use the material recycles machine. The resulting materials can then be used in the fabricator to craft new weapons as long as you have the necessary materials. In my early video, I also told you about the many different variations of Typhons. Luckily, Prey gives us a tool called the Psychoscope. This tool allows us to scan each different variation of Typhon and identify its weakness. I have to say, the level design in Prey is impressive. The way the levels are designed is not only visually stunning, but also functionally engaging. The levels are spacious and there are multiple ways to navigate them. The player has the freedom to choose how they want to approach the game, making it feel like a real open world experience. The ability to spacewalk outside of Talos 1 and enter new levels or use elevator to reach different floors make for a dynamic gameplay experience. The environment feels authentic and every detail is carefully crafted. The atmospheres and level of details make it feel like you're genuinely exploring a space station. One thing that stood out to me was the voice recorders. Each time a player discovers a body, there is voice recorder next to it, revealing a unique story. The stories connect to the main storyline of the player journey in Talos 1, which adds to the immersive experience. Overall, the level of design of Prey is excellent, 
The levels are designed in a way that makes exploration rewarding and the environment is crafted with the utmost care. I want to talk about one of the most significant features of Prey. The Narrow Mods. The Narrow Mods are a type of in-game item that provide the player with a superhuman ability, making the game more interesting and engaging. The player can use the Narrow Mods to acquire abilities such as hacking, telekinesis, and even resurrected monster from the dead bodies. These abilities are powerful and they allow the player to explore the levels in a new and exciting ways. However, the game does have a mechanics where using too many narrow mods has its consequences. It can result in a bad ending or highly powerful typhoon encounter during a playthrough. Overall, I think the narrow mods are an excellent addition to the game. They add a new dimension to the gameplay and the story, making the player experience more immersive and exciting. If you're looking for a sci-fi game with an engaging storyline, challenging gameplay, and immersive world, then Play by Arkane Studio is the game for you. The level design is exceptional and the narrow mods and crafting mechanics add a new dimension to the gameplay. The attention to detail is impressive and the atmosphere and sound design will keep you on the edge of your seat. However, if you're not a fan of games that require a lot of exploration, this might not be a game for you. Additionally, the game can be challenging at times, and some player might find it frustrating. Overall, I highly recommend it Prey to anyone who loves sci-fi games with an immersive world and engaging storyline.